Welcome everyone. What a great honor we have today to again this deep dive into the content for men. We are here to disciple men. Pastor Andrew is my name. I'm always excited to be with a man because when you develop men, when you empower men, when you build men, society is better. Women are better. Children are better. I want to tell you something. 2024 is a year of abundant grace and I want to tell you that you're going to enjoy it as a man. So share this content with other men. Ladies, please share with other men. So we start off our discussion on the content I shared when we were beginning this month on what does it mean to be a man? You know, we are seeing all over the world, uh, many people, especially in Uganda, people are saying, you leave men. They do whatever they want. Now here at Encounter, that's not the statement we say. Here at Encounter, we are here to build men. So the big question is, who is a man? How do you know and what are those, what's the framework on building biblical manhood? What does it mean to be a man? And last, last uh, two weeks ago, I shared with you that there are four character traits. There's a framework that we want to build on this definition called biblical manhood. Number one, every man has to reject passivity. You have to reject passivity. Number two, you have to accept responsibility. Number three, you have to lead courageously. And lastly, you have to invest eternally. So today we are going to dive into the first two. The next month we'll dive into another two and just discuss them with one of my great men that I love, that I've mentored, that we do life together. He helps me carry the Lord of men. In fact, uh, we are going to be beginning this February the teaching about biblical manhood. It will be a six months course for men. You don't want to miss it. So if you want to be a part of it, please come at Encounter, be able to register and be a part of it. So today I have a guest, this great man is of age, is going to introduce himself. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my name is John Mugabe. Thank you, Pastor Andrew, for having me. It's always a pleasure to 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 come and share life with you. Do yeah. we've done life together. And one of the things that I'm passionate about, we're passionate about, is building men. Yeah. I'm passionate about building uh, buildings, but more about building men yeah. and doing life with men. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I have two men in my household I, <laughs> I, that I'm raising to be great men. So yes. because you've taught me to be the man, I need to also pass it on to my young people. But also the teenagers at church, it's yes. been a privilege and an honor yeah. to do life with them. And, and so I welcome you aboard in that discussion. I know we're going to have quite a good time in this place. So, John, we, we always say manhood is a choice. Yeah. It's a choice you, you make. make. Yeah. Um, you are born male, but you choose to be a man. A man. Yeah. And so we want to just come from those lenses that yeah. you're born male, but you make a choice to be a man. A man. How does that look? What, what does that mean when someone says, John, you are born male, but you make a choice to be a man. man. And how is that related to passivity when it comes to the male guy? Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. I, um, that's a very profound statement. We are born male. It's, it's, a, it's a function of biology to yeah. be born uh, male, but you choose to be a man. I remember in all the discussions that we had last year when you're giving and pouring out your life in us uh, during the discussion and the classes, uh, we just opened up with those statements and said, we are born male, you choose to be a man. So manhood... Uh, many men in society today, um, we have very many males, and they will do every kind of. What a male does is that they will they 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 will eat, they will drink and sleep. Yes. But with a man, he takes on the load of responsibility, and and then it goes beyond being just uh, the the function of biology. Yeah. And so for me, uh, that statement speaks to to a man uh, rising up from the from the limbs of just biology and just yes. doing thinking is just a function of giving birth to a child yes. but you choose you choose to take care of what you've sourced yes. whatever you create whatever you source you must be able to sustain yes. that is a, the function of a man and 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 a man would being a choice is yes. that every single day in my life i have to choose to be a man yes they because men today are choosing to be females oh my so goodness. i have to choose to be a man every single day and take on the responsibility that god has given me so with reject in the lenses of rejecting passivity is um we we have uh 
men that are passive. Yes. For my sake, I'll talk about myself because yes. men we speak from our experiences. I was passive in my home. What do and you mean by you know you, you and it's a good thing you're saying men that are passive. What does passivity mean? Passivity means you you abdicate responsibility. You do not take you do not take part. Matters are happening. Things are happening at home, but yeah. you you lay back. You want yes. you have a nothing box in your life. You say, ah, I can watch the movie. Yeah. I can do something. I do what I want. Yeah. And so, men, we don't want to take the the things that matter the most that God has entrusted us. Mm. The the roles that God has entrusted us with, we we took them aside and we just lay back. Yes, lay back, and the women take on. You see, when you allow a virtue, it comes into a place and. Women take on or something takes on yeah. in that place because that's exactly what the first Adam did yes. in the Garden of Eden. So I love what you're, what you're saying that the first Adam um, abdicated his responsibility. He yeah. was passive yes. and and we see him in the in the Garden of Eden. The wife is busy um, having a discussion with the with devil. <laughs> the devil <laughs> took her on a date. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. The devil took Eve for a date. Yeah. And in you know what? Presence. In the, what hurts me is that word <laughs> that you've just mentioned. In the presence yeah. of the husband, yeah. that the husband was there, Eve is there, and the devil and Eve they are having a, a dinner. Conversation, yes. They're having a dinner on the affairs of Adam. Yeah. Did God yeah. really say? say? So they're having a good conversation, yeah. which is manipulated. Yeah. But you see, Adam is watching. So I can imagine, I mean, uh, someone comes in my home and is having dinner with my wife. And they are and talking they are, about the affairs of my house. And you're laid back. I'm laid back. And many men, Musumba, many men, uh, I think that includes me. Yeah. Many men, we, 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 we go home and, and you, you, you're not having conversations with your children. Yes. I used to be that kind of man before we came for the classes. And, and when you spoke passionately about rejecting passivity, I knew I was passive in certain areas. And yeah. some areas I didn't know that I was actually passive. Yeah. So in that area of uh, Adam taking Eve on a date, I, 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 actually, I think my wife was taken on a date many times. Wow. Because there are some things that would come and go and say, anyway, that one will pass. Mm. But you are the man to create the, the, the strength in that home. Yeah. You as a man, you create the, the, you give direction to that home. Yeah. And every time you abdicate, everything goes. Yes. So, when we talk about you being passive at home, yeah, yeah, and 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 your wife being taken for a debt, yeah, and that debt may be, I tell men that um, passivity is we see it in the area of what matters most. Yeah. So you find that uh, the child is sick. The man has no clue that the child is sick. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, you ask an average man which class is your child. And they have no they clue. Know. They have no clue which yeah. class their child goes. Where do they go to school? Uh, somewhere, somewhere. What are some of the areas where we see passivity yeah. today in a contemporary modern man? One, the area of passivity in, in, in at home. In, uh, being in, present at home for the children. Yeah. You see, for what is very important for children is presence rather than presence. Very the good. men that these days, being passive, you know, being passive, we have replaced um, the presence with presence. Mm. We think that when you buy this guy a, a, a toy car, when you give them something, they will love you more. But yet they need your presence. Yeah. You've told us before that monkey see, monkey do. Yes. And, and, and I remember that statement when, when my son came to me and he was crying at home. After this class, when I enrolled for these classes, this son of mine comes. He's a five-year-old. He comes to me and he 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 was he was crying all the time. And I talked to him with looked in in the eyes and told him, mm. Now that statement it means men don't cry cry all yes. the time. Yes, they were not always weeping. Yes, men can cry, but they don't cry cry all the time. So I was telling this young man, yeah. and this four year old, I mean five year old, he was four years then. For, he, he looked at me in the eye and he started to 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 suck it up and then be, become own it up and then move away from from me. But then uh, what was baffling, what was even very exciting was when he found a, a three year old about a week later, yeah. and then he found the three-year-old also crying around. He told him, Umchad Daraka Bakaba. 
<laughs> he was speaking to this young boy yeah. now as a man i had to be present yes. and make sure that this young man is not going to be weeping all the time crying all the yeah. time and that's what you told me last year yeah. i had to be present with my children men you have to be present yep you have rather to. than giving your children presents giving them toys does not work they need your time they spell love as t i m e time yes and that's very important so you are passive in your parenting yes uh there's also passivity in marriage yes i was passive uh, not having conversations with yeah, my wife yeah so she would come and i should and you know they stretch you she would stretch me with it. so where are we going she needs she need direction and say where do you want us to go now a man, the, the woman has come to you for direction and you are you are asking her where should we go it's exactly yeah. what adam was doing yeah. he was laying back the the, the woman was having conversation with, the, with devil. the devil the devil gave the direction they give that the devil gives direction when man abdicates yes when we are passive when we sit back and 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 i've also seen this in a lot of men yeah especially the younger men they be passive on work yeah you know when it comes i will do and we'll look at that in responsibility but there's a lot of passivity around that so i wanted to ask yeah um what are some of the excuses that the world and the men have adopted as as why they are passive yeah there are so many excuses and and one of them is that um they they they, they, they are, we are proud yeah first of all there is there is ego in man and ego is not bad no so. ego is not bad god gave us that ego to to do things that matter the most paul says i boast in christ yes so he boasts in things that matter yes the things that don't matter and men, men are boasting in things that don't matter don't matter yeah yeah so we are we, we are ignorant in that area so and there's a knowledge gap there's a knowledge gap mm. and at encounter here we disciple men Pastor Andrew has opened by talking about discipling men. We are beginning in February. We want to invite you to be discipled. Because when you don't know, yes. anything will go. That's anything true. will you, you go with myths. You live your life on myths. Yes. When I got information about disciples, and I, 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 I had to put excuses away yes. and started to do life with men. Yeah. I started to be accountable. Yeah. Because you, men run away from accountability. accountability. Yeah. So there's a knowledge gap yeah where at encounter we are saying we're going to disciple men yes but there's something else you brought it there Th there is there is that accountability part yeah. yeah so a man is passive because it's not held accountable yes and that is a bad one yeah but also there's something that i know that, I, that, that many of our young people yeah including myself been raised by by a beautiful amazing man. man and we applaud them for that <laughs> we applaud them now for how that. has that brought in a bit of passivity on the side of the of the boy child i think they, they there is a bit of um late you know mothers are are, are very they're naturals. they're naturals they are so natural you know i there was a time i was with my mom for a very long time and and she would nurture me and some some exact no john it's okay it's it's okay but men we are built to take on responsibility yeah. we are built to not be just to do things, to do things. Yes. i would not i would wonder why i'm at the same place all the time yeah. i would wonder why addictions would not break because i would not do something about it yeah. because i was given the comfort yes. My, moms bring comfort yes so much yes. and so because i was so good in that area i stayed comfortable and never advanced in my life yeah. what that shook for me in the discipleship class i i, I think that year of increase became an, uh, it shook everything every aspect of my life yeah every aspect and i would like to encourage men to 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 shake off the the shackles of comfort, comfort. because video you never game. yes you know you, you video your game extended adolescence you yeah. talked about it in the class i was looking am i really in the <laughs> season of extended adolescence because yes. the things that i was doing yes i was do, as, as, as if i was an adolescent yes and yes. men we we want to we want to do that we want the comfort we want those things that uh uh, are good to uh, they we seem don't want to, to live yeah. home we don't want to live home there's internet everything, everything. So we're that, just passive we are just passive we want to be there there doing nothing, nothing. yeah now what us to yes we've seen passivity we've yeah. seen it with uh, adam was a passive man and a lot of men in the, in the bible you can yeah. see that they exemplified passivity yeah. um now let's gear into another incredible myth yeah. before even we got to 
to responsibility. Yeah. I've heard that myth of uh, men just grow up, and I think that's that's <laughs> that's one of the reasons we are yeah. passive. Uh, yeah. Just elaborate on that. You know, when I when I'm I'm an older age equals to being a man, and yeah. yet for us we say age equals to being passive. Yeah, Be- because there's more to there's more man than age. Than age. How, what, what are your comments on that? I, I think that is very, very important. There is more to a man than just age. Yeah, I, and I, I, I remember when I had, uh, was going to marry my wife, they told me, now you are a man. <laughs> but, you know, marriage does not simply make you a man. That's true. And, and you, you, you can be a man even, as I encourage teenagers at church, that you can be a man even while you're young. Yes. You can be young. Jesus at age 12 was confounding the elders with wisdom. Yep. He was a man's man. Yes. You know, so it, it's, it, it's that kind of thing that we are coming from. So a, a age does not make you a man. Mm. You're mm. young once, but you can be immature for a lifetime. Say that again. You are young once, but you can be immature for a lifetime. Yes. We have men at age 60, but the things that they are doing is for age 12. <laughs> and the man at age 15 is just doing great things they are doing exploits at age 15 disciples yes. you told us in the in yes. the discipleship class that disciples were actually teenagers yes they did great things they were they writing were passive. they were not passive so we we you know it defies age and and they, they the young boys today we want to do life with them the young boys the moms have given them that cushion for them to sit back and you yeah. see the girls are aggressive yes. the girls have been yes. have, have been given it see yes. i did an interview and uh, about, we had eight applicants six of which were ladies yes. and four were, were were men but the men two of them never showed up for the interview passive they had excuses passive but then the girls showed up and they were dressed they were on point they brought and, their egg and, and and they, they <laughs> and they usually do and we had no option but to take on a girl for an estate job that really required a man. A man. We, she, she beat, she floored the men. My goodness. So it's, it's, it's how now the, the boy child, that, that lack of mentorship, yes. that lack of uh, being, the, the myth that boys just somehow, they will grow. They, metam- they metamorphosize, they yes. grow, they transition. Yeah. Men don't just grow. Men need men to be men. Yes. And I'm yeah. glad that, Pastor, we are doing life with you. You've challenged me. Last year, you, you set us a target for 100 million. And I'm telling you, we pushed and pushed. It get, that was my first big target in life. <laughs> and we're Before going to, I never had it. <laughs> and we're going to just dive into that now that yeah. you've brought it. So we reject passivity. We yeah. choose not to be passive. Yeah. But then we tell men to accept what? Responsibility. Responsibility. We tell men you need to accept responsibility. Yeah. And we use the double cabin uh, analogy. analogy. Uh, men are what? Double, double cabins. cabins. For you men who are coming to join our class, that's the word you will hear. Men are double cabins. Yeah. That everything we do is like a double cabin. One of the greatest things about a double cabin is that the more load you put, the more stable, the more stable it becomes. Yeah. The more load you put, the, the most more stable it becomes. But the unfortunate thing is this, that the world is doing everything to remove load from the double cabin, yeah. from a man. Um... So for you, how is your double cabin? <laughs> you know, after the discipleship class, and, and when I heard about the double cabin analogy, you, 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 in that very moment, I was um, coordinating the class of men. Yeah. And I was also facilitating with the, the, teenagers. the teenagers. I was planning camp for them. We were doing <laughs> life together. It was a double cabinet. Pa- Pastor Simon would say, John, you're leading prayers this time. And, and all it was a double cabin. That did not stop also on, on, uh, on, on the load that I had at home. Yes. I had my wife I had to take care of. Yes. I, was, I had my children. I had work to do. In fact, that, I had friends to meet. In fact, that very year at work, I excelled more. Wow. Because you told me something about deep work. Yes. You told me about deep work and, and being able to, to, to deliver many things. And so it's something that we need to, to work on. And the double cabin analogy was bringing that out for me. So um, on, the, on the double cabin analogy, yes. we always say that the more you load the double cabin, the better the, it becomes. Yeah. The more, the more stable, stable it becomes. Yes. No wonder the success you got. Yes. You see, the, the world thinks that when you put more weight on a man, you crack him. No, yes. no, 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 no. Men were built for weight. We're built for weight. Now, God gave three things 
as responsibility yeah. to Adam. Yeah. I would love us to go through those responsibilities. Yes. In Genesis chapter 1, he talks about around 15, 16, 18. He speaks about the responsibility he gave him. Yeah. Number one, he gives him, he puts him in the garden. Yeah. To what? To work. work. Men were built to, to work. work. How is your work? <laughs> I think my work skyrocketed um, at the time when, when you told us that principle of double cabin. I knew that I could take on more load mm -hmm. and not be shaken. I remember uh, the assignments that I used to do for a week, I would do them in two days. Wow. Two days. And I still had the same time, yeah. but it would free up my time to even be able to do other things. I told my people at work that this... For me, when you see me, this is a man of solutions. Bring every problem to me. <laughs> I welcome problems. I see problems as something that it's something. That I'm excited by problems now because of what that analogy did for me. You told yeah. me, John, deep work means that you go to work and use the first three hours to do the work. The work. Do and deliver the work and yeah. finish it. Yeah. So as you finish it, everything that comes in, my before my out, my entry was feeling. Mm -hmm. And my outro would not, it would, would not, not I, would, out I would not churn out. Out of 10 assignments, I would still have 10. I've yeah, done all, all of them up to 20%. But, and I would give excuses. You know, you're giving us a too much work. But when that principle hit home, I'm just waiting for promotion. I love that. I'm just waiting for promotion. I love because that. I knew that my excellence, work is a calling. Men have got to be, you yes. told us that. Work is a calling. I, I, I realized that now I am here to make God proud. We're here for I, dominion. I'm here for dominion. I'm here to perform to the audience of one yes. God. And yes. so I get to work. I deliver. Yes, I deliver. I deliver. Work was exciting. Work was a calling. Before it was a burden. Now I look and I'm encouraging young people. When you get given some an assignment, do, do it with all your heart. Do it fast. Because that's where the reward is. And yes. do it fast. Do it fast. Do it fast. We're here for dominion. Yes. We're here to take over. I That gave me time to yes. start even building my company. Tell me about Last that. Last year, Musumba, I got some LPOs. <laughs> some purchase orders. <laughs> the ones that you didn't know. <laughs> the ones I didn't. I, I, you know, I was so much consumed with these, these things that I didn't know that I could have time to yeah. actually build a company. Yeah. I built two companies last year. Very good. One uh, of them, and they are doing so well. Yeah. One of them is a construction company. The other one, we built a hospital. Yeah. My wife is an MD. Yes. Give yes. Up, making, giving her platform to be yes. an MD of yes. an, a, a, a community-based hospital. And it is serving. She, it, we served 150 patients last year. That's and good. all of them were worked on well. Now, to tell you that I was able to build the hospital, build the construction company, was because of the double cabin principle. Man, don't run away from responsibility. It's enjoyable. Yes. It's enjoyable to take on load. It's enjoyable to, to actually do many things. In fact, I'm excited that we have prayers. We have this going. Pastor that you see is leading prayers. He's called for this teaching. He's going for And he's doing up and about so many things. He's preparing for conferences. He, You may think that he's just doing pastoral work, but he has a consultancy firm. You know, so all that men we are able to do, we are built for dominion. Hallelujah. I would leave you to um, speak forever. <laughs> <laughs> now, on, on that principle of God put Adam in the garden to yeah. work it. Yeah. What, we, what I'm realizing these days, yeah. there are two, two, two great uh, uh, discrepancies. Yeah. There are those who are giving it 100%. Yeah. Even 120 <laughs> So they are out of balance. Yes. So the double cabin is too loaded that it's 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 almost it's, about to tip. Tip. it's almost tipping. Yes. Um but also there are those who have and we've talked about the, the they are passive, they don't they don't want to work. Where do you find balance? Yeah. For you, how do you balance making sure that all these balls because you've talked about companies you've opened up. Yeah. Being a husband, being a father, mm. how are you balancing that? And, and and I'll begin from that model still of double cabin analogy. You know, when I get to do um, assignments, yeah. it's one assignment at a time. Yes. When I finish this assignment, I can take on another. Yes. But if I don't finish this one, I cannot take on another, another assignment. So it's the next item on the list. 
if i finish this item i'll move in from yes. here i'm going now for business somewhere else I ha and then in the evening, we have evening of prayer. We yes. are in the middle of a fasting season. We have to do all that. And at the same time, my wife is dropping the kids. I have to take them back. So all those things is the next item on the list. How do you find balance is prioritizing. Yes. You have to have priorities in your life as a man. Mm. Mm. And so for me, there are things that matter the most. Mm. Ministry matters most to me. Yes. And so I have done, because I have made sure that I do things in time, it frees my time. My boss, I've talked to my boss and told him, because I want to do life with teenagers, every Tuesday afternoons, yes. I need to be able to, 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 to book leave within that time. Very good. So I get to work. I work from, from, from 7 to around midday, and I've finished all my day's assignment. Good I'm work. free. <laughs> so it's, it's most importantly for you to make sure you balance your time. Yes. You, you, you prioritize and get things done. Churn yes. things out. Yes. That's what we are about. It creates time for Very you. Good. So now when I create time, I go to, the ch to church. I do life with them. No pressure. And after that, I go spend time with my wife. After that, I go to the site. It's the next item on the list. Very good. How is the 100 million? The hundred million we had to reinvest it back, and um, I'm, I'm now I am I am I am worth I close to two hundred million now because Very of the, the structures and uh, that I'm putting up the income the passive income that you have told me and Pastor Angel has told me about turning uh, my liabilities into assets. Yes, yeah, that one she talked very passionately about, and I said I must apply every principle that I've learned. Yeah, yeah. and Encounter Church, listen to me, we have been taught yeah. so much information. An acquisition of information is knowledge. Yes. But when you're full of knowledge, you become a fool if you don't apply it. Yes. We must apply, step out and apply the knowledge that we have received from our pastors. We, we, wisdom is in the application. It is. If you, you don't know, apply it's the truth it. that you apply that will work for you. Yes. Let's apply this truth. Yes. These things are so dear for me because for me, I am, I'm, I'm, I go back to podcasts and I listen and I'm say, I not that I am always in church writing down. I want to apply all these things because yeah. they are very very profound. Let's be doers of the word. Doers of the word. Yeah. The second thing that God gave um, Adam is the will to obey. Yeah. He told him in the middle of this garden, I've given you everything. You yeah. have all the gold, the water, everything. You have all the plants. But when it comes to this in the middle, yeah. do not touch. The instruction. He didn't even just say do not touch. He said do not <laughs> eat. You can touch, but you do not eat. Do not eat. Um, and for us, when I'm teaching men, yeah. every man has been given a will. And that will is the word of, of God. God. God has given us the word. How are you faring and how is man faring right now, the contemporary man faring on the will of God, on the Bible? The contemporary man, I, 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 I love how that is very, very important. You know, there is, um, there is something in society today that, that they want we, we want, we want to reduce God's word yeah. to our lifestyle. Yeah. Instead of taking our lifestyle and conform it to the word of God. We are twisting the things around. Yeah. The word of God is the standard. That's the yeah. will to obey. Yes. You cannot change God's will. No. And he will not, uh, pastors, uh, Pastor David says, he will not change it for your sake. Yes. He will not reduce it for your sake. Yes. Because of your emotions. So you, 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 your lifestyle should conform to the word the of standard. God instead of you making the word of God conform yes. Yes. to your lifestyle. Yes. We want to choose scripture. Men, we are built to study the word of God yes. because that's where wisdom is. Yes, that's where wisdom is. That's where you can find strength. That's where that will to obey that truth is the one that has helped me, enabled me, yes, to overcome even addictions because of that truth. Because it is it is that will that is our direction. Yes, the word of God is our direction. It's our compass. It's our compass. And, yes. and, and, and whenever I'm speaking to men, I'm shocked. I've been in church for many years, yes. pastored for many years. Um, some men will come and drop their children at church, and then for them they stay yeah. in the car. Yeah. Or they drive away. Mm. Then, fifteen years from now, they will wonder why is my boy behaving the way they are They're behaving. behaving yeah. Why? Because they missed out on the will that God has given them. Yes. And so they walk in the shadow of the first Adam. Of the first Adam. Yes. Instead of walking in the shadow of Jesus, Jesus. the last Adam, yes. who obeyed the will of, of the God. Father. He obeyed it to the dot. No wonder yes. Jesus, wherever he went, he said that I'm doing the will of God. Of God. 
Now I tell I tell young men who are want to date and all that and we talk yeah. about it and say if the guy you want to date cannot even tell you the 10 commandments <laughs> you're headed so for trouble you're in trouble yeah because he doesn't know the will so how will he obey what he doesn't no doesn't know yeah. and that's where the crisis is and yeah. i want to applaud you thank you for discipling the young people at church thank you it's an honor <laughs> it's a privilege and i think for me that's very important and and, and you see musumba i'm discipling the young people but you've also challenged me at home and i am a bishop yes i'm a bishop at home Hallelujah. i go home and i open the word the scroll i open the bible and i teach my family very good I, men we ought to teach yes we ought to teach our family as i've been taught i come to church not to do church because many young people and i tell them we are doing church because our parents are also doing church mm. you do church mm. churchianity is not synonymous with christianity, christianity no and so I, I go home and I teach my men, and I yeah. teach my girl, I teach my wife, I teach them because you have taught me the word, and yes. so I must pass it on. Yes. So men, we are house. built, we I am the priest in that home. Because I have a priest in my life, the high priest Jesus, I must also function in that area of my priesthood. Wow. Let's talk about the last one. Yes. So we see Adam was given work, yes. to do, which we ought to be doing. Adam was given um the will to obey. to obey, yes. But the other thing that Adam was given <laughs> was a wife to, to love. love. Yeah. Adam was given a wife. Yeah. How are you doing with your wife? Wow, our our, our relationship is just amazing, and I, <laughs> and I thank God for 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 encounter. I I, I think it the encounter awakened something a ministry in me. Yes. Yeah. It awakened my ministry. It awakened my marriage. And uh, so, so much that I am so conscious about my wife. Mm -hmm. When you go and uh, when I see you, how you love uh, Mama, how you, you 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 listen to her, how you have given her space to, to function and, and, and be in her space, that is what I emulate. Yes. And I do for my wife as well. As, uh, and, 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 uh, of course, one would say that uh, you, you're copying, but see, monkey do, monkey do. That you're my it. father. You and so you when are. you went to, I, I remember when you had a trip for holiday, mm. I was also checking in and checking in the status of, uh, of, of Mama. And, and I said, oh, but you know, Mama has told me you have to save for every expense you're going to do. You have to save. If you haven't the money, if you don't have the money, yes. you must be able to learn the saving culture. And so I started saving. And so last year, at the end of the year, we went for uh, a we are celebrating eight years and we went for Come honeymoon. Come on now. Because <laughs> 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 monkey do monkey. <laughs> I said, we are not going to do Dubai right now. Hey. We're not going to go outside countries. It's right? coming. But it's coming. It's coming. Right now, it's my papa has told me that give time to your woman. Yes. That's the most important. That's the bottom line. Nourish. Do cherish. cherish her. Nourish. And nourishment is you be you be present with her. Listen to her. So what I did is is that and what that did for me, the woman was just all pouring out the love <laughs> on me. And I've I've learned that, that that as I listen to her, as I pray with her, yeah. you know, you're intimate with your wife when you pray with her. The men mm -hmm. have, <laughs> when I pray with her and I speak over her as a priest and I tell you I love you and I declare this over you. She 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 she, she can even cry in the prayer because most of the time I am expressing my deepest connection to her it built it has built our intimacy it has yeah. grown just yeah. that discipleship class has skyrocketed my marriage <laughs> and, and i believe i'm not the only man but every man that was a, a part of those classes so uh, what a, a, a woman to love is yeah. um we, we we are we are given a responsibility to to steward yes we are stewards of her love yes we do not beat no we do not do and men who do that they are actually males yes, not men they are not because men. a man accepts the responsibility that god has given them yes. and you cultivate you yes. nurture you take care you she wants a nice wig you put it on she wants a new dress you go and they shop it and you pay for it and that's what men are built to do <laughs> So and, and for me when I did that for my I gave her a platform. It's like she's just moving on cloud nine. When she's pregnant, she just moves and, and all over the place she wants to show off because I've given her that platform. Yeah. Wow. And and, and that's what our women desire for us. We are stewards of their love. Man, you're doing well, John. <laughs> you told me well. <laughs> the 
the there was also an aspect of yes you're not yet married yeah. you're young you're with the young people and uh, just how can a young man in a nutshell prepare themselves for to love yeah to love because we're seeing young men now take centuries yeah to get married mm. they are 30 now 35 they're into 34 they they are shying away from that responsibility yeah. um how how can we encourage yeah. s- these young men to get off their father's home or their mom's home and just go and get start a family yeah yeah what what would be your advice for such a young man you see the scripture says um uh enjoy the wife of your youth yes not your old age <laughs> <laughs> So enjoy the wife of your youth. So I I, ah. when I married my wife. I, I think we were dating. She was 24 and I was about 26 years. Yeah. And and we started young. Um, That was the, the perfect time because you taught us the seasons. You taught us the season. season. You miss a season. It will take you a lot of time for you to recover that season. Yeah. So what I did with my wife, when we got married, we got, we, we you start doing life with another person. Yeah. And it's taking on responsibility as yeah. well. It shows it shows me that I have to be vulnerable to someone, other person that I've not grown up with. Yeah. And that's what builds me. It builds accountability. The things I've done in the last eight years of my life, uh, of my marriage, is because I took on that responsibility. Mm-hmm. I would mm-hmm. not have if I was single. Mm. In fact, the person she was dating before me, mm. she, she she told she told the guy that I'm I'm leaving. Because you, you, I've gotten someone who is visionary. I'm leaving, and then she said, "You leave." Right now, the guy is still single. Absolutely. Why? Because he rejected the responsibility. responsibility. For me, I took the I didn't have much. Yes. I had just stop thinking that marriage is made by money. Yeah. No, marriage is made by two people who have two people who have God with him, with yeah. them. Yes. And when God is in the your midst, He'll yes. make things abound toward you. Wow! I want to tell all the young men out there. You're ready to get married. How do you know you're ready to get married? You're passionate for Jesus. Yeah. You are in you are in the vineyard. You're working. Yeah. You're working. You're working. You have to work. Um, Adam was given a woman when Adam was in the garden. So you yeah. have to be in the garden. You have to be obeying the will of God. God. And now you need you, you need to get out and get a woman. Get a woman that you will love. Make sure that double cabin is full. It's a commitment. <laughs> It's a commitment. commitment because a man without commitment is a man without achievement. You Nothing. mentioned that. Absolutely. You can never achieve if yes. you cannot commit. Yes. Achievement is about commitment. Men commit to things that matter the most. And marriage is something that will shape off your ego. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Put you in yeah. line. You will find you. So, as yeah. young men out there, I want yeah. to tell you get off those social media platforms that are keeping you, you know, you know, pornography and all those, yeah. those, those alcohol, escapes, yes. those escapes. Get extended out adolescence get out of those things yeah. i want you to make a commitment add weight on yourself double yeah. cabinet one of those great weights we add is when we choose to start a what start a family, family. Yes. it's very 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 important so john as we come to the close of these two amazing attributes of who a man is, is rejects yes. passivity and accepts, accepts responsibility. responsibility jesus rejected being passive he accepted yeah. what responsibility he worked so hard he mm-hmm. obeyed the father's will he loved his woman who is the church yes. the church is the woman for jesus and so what are your parting shots wow thank you pastor um this has been an amazing discussion <laughs> um one of the things that i want to tell the young people and men out there is um any man by himself is an accident waiting to happen mm. and if you do life alone as a man you are just a, it's just an accident that's going to happen but soon so come and do life with us we are beginning this discipleship it's a it's a six it's a load it's a weight in fact that is one of the tests that will that will will, will leap you into manhood because you're putting on a load on yourself don't accept the path of least resistance mm-hmm. it, it doesn't make a man take on the weight God wants to be your God and he doesn't want to be ashamed to be called your God. And so you need to come up and be discipled, be accountable, do life with real men. And that encounter, we do life with real men. There are men who have shaped me. There are men who are opening businesses. There are men who are investing. There are men who are good at prayer. There are men who are like, I am challenged. I mean, people who are better than me, I am challenged. They are challenging me and lifting me up to be a great man. So I want to encourage you. 
don't do life alone. Don't fight your officer. Yeah. Don't die officially. Come and join us in the counter and you'll be blessed. <laughs> You've heard the man, John. Uh, I'm going to have him again next month on this podcast. Um, these are my parting shots on today. Reject passivity. That's very important. Manhood is a choice that you make. As a young man, as an old man, you may be 50 years, but you're behaving like a 20-year-old, still in parties and all that. We have to reject such things that are nonsense. They, they, they are not building us. Yeah, Men yeah. M- focus on what matters most. So we reject Passivity. passivity. If you are there and you're still passive, you're on liquor and you're hiding out, we w- I want to call you out. I want to call you out. My job as, as, as a pastor of men is to call men out, to call them out, yes. to tell them stop being passive. There's more in you. But also we take on the responsibility. It's a double cabin, my friend. It is a double cabin mindset. <laughs> more Lord. Always yeah. add more Lord. Stop complaining. Stop begrudging at work. Add on more Lord. If you're still at home, add on the Lord. Yeah. Add on the Lord. Men were not built to sit back. Men are built to change the world. Yeah. And we can't change it when we are seated at home or when we are carrying less the Lord. The world needs great men. Yeah. The world is crying for great men. And I want to tell you, you're one of those great men. And you may be saying, I don't see it. Yes, that's why we are here. To call out that greatness in you. Yeah. There is more in you. So as we conclude today, I want you to know, that you are loved, you're cherished, we love you, we honor you, and we want the best out of you. And this month, we'll be registering those that are coming to attend a six-month course. It's intensive. If you're not ready to carry a lot, don't come. We only want men that are ready to carry the Lord. Lord, yeah. So as men, you have heard what um, John has been sharing. These are powerful things where he's loving his wife, he's rejecting passivity, he's reaching out to his own children and making sure they have such a father that they could, like the father in heaven. Mm-hmm. All the things John is able to do that you've had, being yeah. able to follow the will. <laughs> that is a tough one, to yeah. follow the will, because yeah. men have a will. Yeah. But for you to subject your will to the will of the father and follow scripture, I can tell you it's impossible to do it without Christ. Absolutely impossible. And it doesn't matter who you are. Self-will will always fail you. But there's one person who will never fail you, and that is Jesus. And our motto today, Jesus rejected passivity. Yeah. Jesus took on the responsibility. Yes. He was able to work. He told the disciples, I've come to do the work of my father. father. He said, whatever I see my father do, I do. He followed the will of the father. And he loved us as the church. And that motto, we get it from Jesus. It is impossible to do the things we're sharing with you if you don't have Jesus. And so I want to call you as a young man, as an old man, as a grandfather, to a place of accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That has changed my life as a man. I am who I am. John is who he is. Yes. And all the men I bring on this platform is because of the passionate relationship we have with our model, Jesus. So if you are out there and you're saying, Pastor, my man, I need to receive Jesus. I just want to give you this opportunity. Right now, where you are, you can invite him. Right now, where you are. Yeah. Would you invite him? Just tell him, Lord, I come before you today and I choose to receive you. I choose to receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I choose to surrender to you. I surrender everything I am to you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to reach out to us at Encounter. We're stationed at, um, at Natete Business Center. Just on that, on those lights, we want to connect with you. You can put in that chat on that on, on the comment section just yeah. just put in your name put in your number our team will follow you up we want to connect with you because when a man connects with the resurrection power which is jesus yeah they will never remain the same they're unstoppable all right you may be able to also follow us on the different platforms where we consume this content on uh, x on, on on instagram and on uh, tiktok and on on our YouTube channel. Many of us attend this on YouTube t- uh, channel. I want you to subscribe so that other men can also get this content. Share with them. The beauty about this content is this. It will make you better. So from us, the team here at Encounter and the rest of the men that are behind the cameras and the men that we are discipling, we want to say bye-bye. See you next month.